Hey, what's up, guys? Can we cast this game between Max Double Zero in the blue at 825 versus Nightmare in the red at 1151? So, playing the red did go first. He's gonna go for a one day of peace. And usually, they're. Okay, actually, I wanted to show. Oh, actually, something new. Okay, cool. I thought it was gonna be the. Uh, what is it? The morphing jar? It's probably, it is probably it is the morphing jar. So this is a deck out deck, which I don't think we've actually seen before on my channel. There might have been a, one morphing jar player, maybe like a year ago. It's been so long since I've actually seen anyone actually try to do this. But uh, that said, he's activating Book of Tayu, so that flips uh, one uh, face down monster into face up attack position. And then, so both, it just makes your opponent, okay, so it just makes your opponent mill five. Um, and this is like really good against Light Sworn. If you can activate this effect maybe like once or twice, you can usually deck them out. Um, but he did activate one day at peace before. So, face down, it could be a Book of Moon. Book of Moon really did help the deck. So, ooh, what are we seeing out of our player in the blue? Are we seeing Dark World Gear Towns? I haven't really seen, or it's probably just Ancient Gear Giltron Dragon. So, uh, I'm actually curious to see. Oh, and Graph is going to say bye bye to the back row. I would have targeted this. Because if this is like a, a chainable, which it probably is, my guess. Let's see what it is. Oh, it is a chainable. So flip all uh, face up monsters on the field, but face down defense position. And during the end phase, you flip them all back up. And then um, your opponent draws a card for each. So it is a deck out deck. Um, Dark World is a relatively fast deck, though. So let's see how Dark World approaches a, a deck out deck. I think that, you know, getting the mill <laughs> kind of helps Dark World really. Um, because it lets you, you know, have targets for your field spell. You can see that uh, gear town, and he's going to destroy it, essentially. And remember, you always want to put the field spell face down, that way you can successfully get out your ancient you know, Geltrad dragon. And then he's going to activate the gear town, and then he's going to set a. Oh, he's going to play multiple. Is he really playing multiple of the uh, ancient good Geltrad dragon? Because he is. Uh, is he going to forget that he's under one day of peace? Because that is one mistake that can cost you in the game. Sometimes you forget your opponent has like a battle fader, and if they can follow up with like a dark hole, that's going to be game. Um, I mean, if we see a dark hole from a player in the... So he can still attack. He still takes no battle damage. And his monster, I believe, can still be destroyed by battle. Oh, no. It's not dark world. He's just running a mix of dark worlds. Um, probably like a skill drain deck. Looks like a skill drain uh, ancient... Oh, and card attacking too. I don't know. A mix of dark world plus uh, like a skill drain... Because I, I saw that Beast King uh, got built. Wait, wait, one day at peace. Didn't he? Wait, wait hold on. Uh, let, me, let me help this guy. Uh, yeah, you don't take any damage. He, you activated one day at peace. Did you forget about that? See, I try to help these other players because, you know. Um, yeah, it, it's it's nice. It's, it's a generous thing to do. And also, um, you know, the... What right player should uh, actually be winning? Uh, well, I mean, at this point, I don't know who I'm rooting for, to be honest. Um, I kind of want to see how the deck plays out. The thing is, with these guys, the Ancient Gear Gear Jeltron Dragons, uh, when they declare attack, you can't activate anything. However, you can uh, activate cards as soon as they enter the battle phase. So, I'm going to set uh, two back row. But remember, you cannot activate any um, anything when they declare their attack. So, you got to activate them pretty much... Um, right now, or when they when he enters the battle phase. So I guess you know the dark world cards might just be there for a little bit of draw power. And, you know, or, ooh, a morphing jar, pretty good. Oh, but the thing is, if you discard any dark worlds, good luck. Oh, oh no, not a dark world. Oh, not a dark world either. Oh, player the red hat, really lucky. Had any of those been dark worlds? Oh, those dark worlds effects get so so incredibly nasty. Uh, when they are discarded by your opponent's card effect. Uh, so it is a deck out deck. But you can see he's he's doing a pretty good job so far. Um, he's going to have to take all that damage because you cannot activate. Oh, what? Oh, okay, right. Because one of the cards attacked Morphing Jar. I was like, wait, he's not going to attack with the other one? But yeah, one of the cards attacked into Morphing Jar. Um, yeah, our player in the red got super lucky that our player in the blue didn't have any Dark Holes. And we see a Dark Hole, like I said, that's going to completely change the game around. Um, I mean, our player in the. Blue actually could have overlaid for like, what is it, the, the Heliopolis something, I forgot what it was called. He's going to go for a Feather of the Phoenix, so he discards one card, then targets one card in his graveyard, and returns it to the top of his deck. So it doesn't get to add it to your hand, so it's not like Monster Incarnation, but what is he going to try, he's, why would you just play Monster Incarnation? Maybe, maybe he's got some plan, maybe, I don't know.
Well, one day there's. Oh, okay. Hey! <laughs> um, the thing is, I can't. If our player in the new has a bunch of Dark World in his hand, yeah, it, it, it could get. Again, like I said, pretty nasty. Um, those Dark World, I wish I could click them to show you. Um, I think Graphite like, targets one card in your hand if it's a monster, you can get like, special summon it. And like taking away like someone's morphing draw would be uh, totally game breaking. Um, but I don't think our player in the blue is playing like heavy dark worlds. Is always gonna go for a malefic Stardust Dragon. Um, all right, that's cool. Um, deck devastation damage, very good option. Do you have a response? Book of Eclipse. Um, I mean, you, you can chain this, but nothing will happen. Let's see, because I mean, you can activate this on a face down. Yes, you, you can chain that. But what's the point? And there's no face down monsters actually on the field, so nothing. I don't even know if you can actually activate this, because there's nothing. Oh, he was, oh, he was revealing his hand. Okay. So yeah, he still has to get rid of Morphing Jar. Very correct, because this. And then for the next three draws. Oh, let me see a heavy storm. Do you have anything? <laughs> so now it doesn't matter, regardless if he could have or couldn't have activated that. What? Huh. So he does get that uh, Gunjilchon Dragon. I think we're just going to see uh, like a, a simple game here. Um, realistically, unless he top decks. Uh, but he did activate one day. I I'll remind him again, because... Playing the red, I mean, most of these players are playing the deck out decks. Um, I mean, uh, not, to, not to say that he's not a good player, but, you know, watch, he'll take the damage. <laughs> is he? Is he going to remember this time? One day. Okay, good job. Good job, Nightmare. You're learning. <laughs> That's why you run one day at peace. Um, but yeah, I mean, now Dark, I mean, the Dark Hole, it did, it did a pretty good job. I mean, he cleared the board, so he's going to activate Feather of the Phoenix. Oh, he's revealing. Okay, never mind. So he's revealing because um, of a deck devastation virus. Uh, and he says GG because he can't do anything. Hey, but he got pretty close. Um, had he activated, um, what is it, uh, a Shallow Grave? And, or actually, had that Morphin Jar actually got its effect off, well, I think there was 13 cards left. He might have actually, maybe, potentially, uh, been able to do uh, some damage there. But yeah, having Heavy Swarm, I don't understand the point of Burrow from a different dimension, though. That card didn't make sense to me, but he was, what is he? 11-40, so I think he's, he knows at least what he's done. I don't know why you play Feather of the Phoenix. Why don't you just play Monster and Reincarnation? Because you could add it right to your hand instead of returning to top deck. You could, you could, when you activate one day piece, therefore you could actually draw a card rather than go way more minus. Yeah, that's the way I look at it at least. But perhaps it's because you could not add, you know, what was it? It's just one card in general. I, I think it was just one card. It didn't have to be a monster. So that could be the reason why he's running it. That's most likely the reason. But yeah, still a pretty cool deck. Um, Doesn't, well, actually... It's a cool deck that I haven't really casted in some time, but it's not a cool deck to play against. By all means, it's, it's pretty much like playing against Final Countdown. You're like, no, no, please don't win. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Asian Eyes White Dragon, signing out.